So over here, uh, we have a bunch of sunflowers. I planted these every two to three weeks, so we're gonna have a continuous amount of blooms here. You can see here that the sunflower is starting to poke out. And, you know, give it a couple more weeks, it's gonna be yellow and, you know, really vibrant. And in the middle here, we got a bunch of gladioluses. And each gladiolus, they're also called sword lilies, uh, is gonna have an abundance of blooms on it. And you can see that I've planted these gladioluses all around the perimeter of where we're at. These are some sweet potatoes and some petunias. We got some uh, more petunias right there. This is a rose bush. And then we got some morning glory coming up this trellis here. I really do like morning glory. Um, gladioluses and some ground ivy. And then this mulberry tree was here when we moved in. And what I've been doing, I've been pruning it to kind of create a living wall. Give us a little bit more privacy. But the birds have stripped this one clean. We got a great little smoker here. Really excited to grill out. And then over here, you can see this is a nice little pussy willow. And it's really doing well. We got this from Udell Botanical Gardens up near LaGrange. And then these are uh, some oak trees that I've grown from for a couple months now. Just, uh, it's been a really fun time. Uh, we got these from different woodlands around Kentucky. These birds are eating out of house and home, but very nice to have around. We get a lot of different birds around here. And then, this is an onion I planted just to see what would happen. You can see that these flowers are, um, you know, I, I, I was surprised. I did not expect uh, one onion to come out with four just in a matter of months. This is an ash tree and we're gonna take it inside after this summer. Uh, we really wanna have at least one ash tree that's not able to be destroyed by the emerald ash borer. And this is uh, a yellow wood tree. A yellow wood is actually one of the rarest trees um, and it is uh, beautiful yellow wood in the center and uh, it actually is a native species of Kentucky. We have some hydrangea cuttings that uh, we got from a few people. And so once these get a little bit more rooted, I'm gonna plant these out in the alley so we can get a lot of flowers next year. And uh, this is more of my potting compost station. <laughs> I, uh, had a, we found this old grill and it's just been really nice to have a, a place to work and pot all these plants because believe me, it does take a little bit. Here are some of the new art pieces that we're gonna hang up in the alley, uh, usually uh, once every couple days someone leaves a new piece of artwork for me and it's just been really nice to see just the different uh, different styles, different pieces. And then here are the pepper plants. Richard, you did a fantastic job. I just Thank really you. hope that we'll be able to <laughs> keep doing it. And then, this is interesting. The, this is an oak tree that I actually found uh, growing in the lawn. And the way it got there is probably a squirrel forgot that it planted an acorn. And uh, I'm trying to do my best to make sure it stays, uh, stays alive, stays happy. And once it gets a little bit bigger, I'm hopefully gonna plant it. So, pawpaws are a very interesting tree and they're a fruit actually, uh, native to Kentucky, one of the only fruit trees that can survive in Kentucky. And um, it's really, really interesting because these pawpaw seeds, they've been around, uh, they're some of the oldest trees in Kentucky. Um, we're talking, they've, they've been around for millions and millions, millions of years. And the thing is that mo most people that 
especially from Louisville, they don't know what a pawpaw is. And so I have decided to find a bunch of seeds. I contacted Kentucky State University, and they supplied me with a lot of seeds. They're doing a really neat uh, pawpaw research program there. And uh, so in each one of these baskets, we're actually going to have, um, oh, hey, butterfly. We're actually going to have um, a kind of mini nursery. And once these get older, they put down a taproot, they grow uh, for about three years. And uh, once they get a little bit bigger, I'm gonna hopefully transplant them out, maybe get a little food forest going on in this section of Beargrass Creek. So I'm really excited. Pawpaws take seven years to bear fruit, but uh, you know, this is something for future generations. When I first moved here, we didn't have any kind of drainage channels, which meant that because we're at the lowest point here in the area, Anytime it rained, all the water would immediately come here and go straight into my patio. So when we first moved here, the brick only actually came up to about here. And this was all mud and grass. So I took a hoe and got all the brick exposed. And then because of all the moisture and water that collected, I decided to make a little garden here, a little raised bed, to capture some of that runoff. And so I dug some drainage channels that are now actually starting to grow in very nicely. And we actually have them all running to a dry well here that I've planted a lot of sunflowers around and uh, definitely a lot of pea gravel, rocks, those kinds of things. Uh, and ever since that has happened, we haven't had as much water pooling. Uh, we've really tried to do everything we can to just make sure that the water is diverted into a place where we can actually manage it instead of having to go through our kitchen door.